talking about language and race today. Can you tell me what your name is? Kayleen. What school do you go to? Washburn. How old are you? 16. What's your name? I'm Troy. What school do you go to? I go to Washburn High School. What's your grade? 11. What's your age? I'm 16 years old. What's your name? My name is Shermaka. What school do you go to? I go to Washburn. What grade are you in? I'm in 11th grade. Um, I think it's good, but also it could be bad because, well, to start off with, like, the good part, like, it's good to have, like, a foundation and, like, a standard language to, like, go based off, um, but also, like, um, it also depends on your environment, like, you don't have to, there's some environments where you have to use, like, you know, standard or proper English, but then also, like, you just, it's, like, conversational, casual stuff. Um, like in school, like at work, um, home, hanging out with friends. So I think it's, um, I personally, I don't, mm, I think I use it, but it's more at school than like at home or hanging out with my friends or texting. Um, I don't think it's a necessity, but I do think you should stay educated because you'll need it if you're like applying for a job or you're writing a paper. Standard English, that it's like the, the norm, that it has to be like, it has, it's the only w way in society we're socially acceptable to talk in. It's sad that we have to, but, um, uh, I mean, it's, I'm okay with it. Like, I have to learn it to, like, I guess, get a job. <clears throat> um, English, Spanish, Spanglish, um, and it's usually not like a standard English or formal. Um, um, but overall, it's usually just English, which is, I think, kind of ironic to what people would think. Um, just because like my Spanish isn't perfect. And so I have, I guess, difficulty talking it at home. Um, and it's not forced either. Um, but it is kind of like a conflict being like having those two languages because you're not perfect in either of them, so. English, formal and informal. Um, at home, I kind of speak like Somali English. It's like I go from both languages. I switch back and forth. Definitely. Um, I think we're not I mean, I feel like we are forced, just like indirectly forced, um, because like if you think about it, where like if we do an essay, especially like in English, and then um, in the rubric, there's always like a, not always, but most of the time, there's like a section or a category for your punctuation or your grammar, and then there's always like your first rough draft, and then after that, it's like another day to revise and edit and to make it perfect. So I think you are forced because if you like misspell or if you do something like wrong it's always like pointed out by the teacher or by someone else um so i think you are like forced yes but not me personally minneapolis public school doesn't allow people with other languages to use them in certain classrooms like people with like muslim heritage aren't allowed to speak their own language well, um i don't know like ever like growing up i guess like I was forced to learn maybe the grammar and everything, but I guess that was for the greater good because in society you're not really, you can't like, I guess, I mean, I don't really feel forced. I guess it's like pressured onto you because in society, I think standard, standard English and formal English is more acceptable. Um, I mean, you can't really write a paper and I guess like for me, like Somali English like, it won't be accepted, so. I'm not really, I don't feel like I'm being forced, but more like it's being pushed onto me. Um, well, I don't think I have a unique way. Um, I feel like people would think that my unique way is Spanish, but Spanish doesn't feel like unique to me. Just because um, my whole life I've been like exposed to like English. And so, um, I don't really think I have a unique way, but even if I did, I don't think that I would be able to express it. Um, just because there's always that, like, idea that it has to be, you know, in proper English. Um, 
in school, you're not allowed to speak your mind. You can't use provocative language, even though it's in some of the material they use. I just kind of do it anyways. I just kind of speak what I'm feeling. Yeah, I feel like, okay, so, uh, like, with socializing, socializing with other people, I guess, I feel like I can express myself in, like, any language I want to, like, with friends in, like, both in school and home and other places. I'm not really, um, <clears throat> not really, like, what's the word, uh, discriminated against, I guess, um, for me, but, like, I guess for like other people I know, like my mother, she talks in an accent. Like she knows English, but she doesn't really know the grammar that well. And the people do give her looks every time she talks in public. Uh, yes, um, especially being bilingual and growing up with two languages. Um, on one side, I get like criticized by my own family, and then from the other side, uh, just from like I would say like society or just that um, idea of being bilingual and knowing two languages. So like on my, on the side of my family, um, like my Spanish isn't like good enough for them or um, I can't communicate with them as well because I don't know like some words or I have to like basically translate what I'm saying from English to Spanish and then I use like the wrong word and then you know there's like judgment there and then from <clears throat> I would say like school and like friends um, some people think I like speak too well English to, for, to be like Latina um, there was a time where this girl asked me if I was half white because I spoke like I would say proper English or she asked me why didn't I have an accent and that was just it was really weird and obviously like disrespectful and yeah and it's just always like growing up with two languages it's that conflict of like not knowing this well and also not knowing that well so constantly in the african-american community they criticize me for speaking proper or like white um and in certain environments i can't speak with slang or else i'm considered a thug which is really stupid What's your name? Well, my name is Matt Cronley. Um, what do you teach? Um, history. How long have you been in Washburn? I've been here about five years. What's your name? My name is Elizabeth Warren Boko. Um, what do you teach? I teach language arts and I, this year I am also doing AP Literature and Composition. How long have you been teaching in Washburn? This um, is my eighth year ending, eight, year, eight years. What's your name? All right, my name is Mr. Latour. What do you teach? I teach geography and I teach uh, U.S. history. How long have you been teaching in Washburn? I've been teaching in Washburn uh, for the past three years. This is my third year here. Um, standard English has its place. Um, it's always it's it's uh, it's kind of weird because there's like an academic language that we usually require for writing, um, but explaining things um, that that tend, it tends to be more of a vernacular, more of like the natural language that people use. Um, and and for me, it 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 uh, it's necessary that writing is conducted in a different language. And we all write differently than how we speak, um, and kind of academic language. Um, is a kind of unique thing that you see in papers and textbooks and in, in, uh, in, in, in newspapers, and it's, and it's a more standard form than kind of how people speak and the run on sentences that people have. I think we should stick with standard English in classrooms. Why? Because of the um, expectations of the SATs and the ACTs, which the questions are based off. Um, standard English is, however, very difficult to get students to use standard English because many a time we, you know, mo most of us, some of us, we are born and brought up here, so we tend to use the language we are used to using, and some of it contain error. They contain error, but we use them every day anyway. 
So it's left for the teacher to make sure that those things are highlighted so okay. students know to consciously make the change, you know, when they have to. So um, use of standard English will expose students to the correct forms and so they can use it when they have to. I, I hear students speaking other languages in class and I'm okay with that because uh, for the most part they're you know, asking each other for directions or questions or what is he talking about um, and if that helps clarify kind of what we're talking about, what, what we're learning about, I'm perfectly fine with that um, because it doesn't matter how students get information, it's, um, it's kind of, if they, if they get it, they understand it. Um, and so if, if students are more comfortable speaking one language over, um, over another, I'm perfectly okay with that. The, the, the written work that's turned in, though, is typically done in um, a certain way and with a certain language. It is, language is actually your thought expressed in words. <clears throat> when you are talking to your friends, you don't think before you talk. So language is really the person, what, the way you speak is who you are. So um, as a teacher, my duty is to make sure I accept everybody because I myself have to be accepted by my students. Having not been brought up here, I, I don't have the American accent. But even though I speak perfect, in my opinion, perfect English, um, students have to adjust to my way of speaking. So everybody has to be accepted. But as an English teacher, it's my duty to continuously make the corrections and bring exercises that would teach students how to properly express themselves in standard English. You, we cannot eradicate um, the dialect. We cannot eradicate it because that's, how, that's who people are. But you have to teach them to be able to be dual speakers. You know, they can speak the dialect, but they can also use standard English appropriately. Um, once again, it's all based on the context, where they're at, what they're doing, what they're trying to express. Um, so I can't def definitely answer that without saying, without knowing what the context is. So if you're in class and you're in a poetry class, you have a lot more leeway to use dialect versus if you are in a history class, where you just need to give a straightforward answer to a question that's asked, where just give it to me as easy as you can without any flourishing language. So it's based on the class, it's based on the context, what you're trying to get across, but I don't think there's any particular dialect that would be wrong, it's just how is it being used in the moment. I do. Um, I think, like you mentioned before, that students getting the information um, it doesn't matter how they get it, whether it's um, through a written piece of work, whether it's a video, whether whether you're kind of hearing people say it, um, it doesn't matter what language it comes in or how you're getting it, as long as the information is getting to you. Um, so in my class, we try to use different different things. Uh, we read aloud. Uh, we have different sources that we look at and read, it. Um, and then we have visual the, the things that we take a look at as well. So it doesn't matter how the information gets to the student. Um, so whether they, they want it in another language or the connections can be made um, that way, uh, it doesn't really no, no, I don't really um, encourage that, but where it is necessary, I do. I have had students who are ALL students in my regular classes, and sometimes, um, like two years ago, I had a Somali student who just came, you know, he could hardly communicate and he needed to write. So after school, if he has to write an essay for me, I will ask him to write it in Somali. He writes it in Somali, and then I, he reads it out to me in English, and I write it out for him. We did that for a while, and then it worked for him. Eventually, he transitioned to be able to um, use English effectively, and believe it or not, he left my class with a good grade. I have also had um, um, students um, write um, their poems in Spanish and translate it to English for creative writing purposes. 
So, um, in like when we did literature circles, you, you find out that there are some books that um, draw certain students together. And in one of my classes this year, I had students of a certain um, language. The most of them, all ninety percent of them, we are from the same ethnic background. And some of them, it was very hard. I definitely would, like, um, I have a lot of EL students, so they're learning English. So if a student speaks a different language, I'm not offended by them speaking a different language. I, I was part of, one time I was an EL student, I speak a different language myself. So I'm not offended by people speaking different languages. Uh, the only thing, once again, about that is, are you speaking a different language at the same time that you're abandoning or not using um, English and building your English skills and unfortunately I see a lot of kids who don't who, who they're comfortable with one language whatever they speak at home or whatever it is and they don't want to use English as much so therefore when they graduate high school their English skills are going to be really low same thing with any dialects too if you want to speak you know um, you know if we call it Ebonics for example um, I'm not sure if that name is still used anymore, or is it African American English, whatever they call it now. Um, speaking like that, you know, sometimes if you do it for too long, you don't realize when you're no longer speaking, you know, proper English, and then you confuse the two. And if you do that in certain settings, it makes you look a particular way. You wouldn't want to go to a job interview and start speaking Ebonics or African American English. It would make you. It probably wouldn't go well for you at a job interview to do that. So I think the more they do it without realizing they're doing it, the more likely they're going to keep doing it and not realize the uh, particular settings they should do it in.